Thanks a bunch, guys. We're back down here on pit lane, and it is race day, number one of two here at Road America. It's the second main event of the weekend here for our drivers. We just wrapped up Indy Lights, and now we're getting ready to go with the Cooper Tires USF 2000 Championship powered by Mazda. It's round number six of the 2018 season, and it's right here in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin at the beautiful four-mile-long Road America. So once again, we'd like to thank Elite Engines, and we'd like to welcome Sam Baldwin of Elite Engines as he gives us those most famous words in racing. On behalf of everyone at Elite Engines, drivers, start your Mazda engines. It's time to go Mazda Road to Indy Racing, round number six of 2018, coming to you next here in the USF 2000 Championship. We're going to go upstairs now to Rob Howden. Thank you so much, Tony, and indeed, 26 young drivers of the very first rung of this Mazda Road to Indy presented by Cooper Tires. Again, the scholarship at the end of the road for these drivers, the champion winning over $350,000 that he will take, he or she will take to the Pro Mazda Championship next year following in the footsteps of drivers like Oliver Askew. Kyle Kirkwood, that's the shot of him there in the number eight for the USF 2000 Juggernaut Cape Motorsports. They've got the last seven championships. Kyle Kirkwood leading the points coming in here, a very talented young driver who cut his teeth in karting, was a, a national level carter, one of the top ranked drivers in national karting by eKartingNews.com. And not surprising coming here into being so good. Last year winning the F4 US Championship, transitioned into the Mazda Road to Indy, putting full focus, the full target on the Verizon IndyCar Series. And of course, like all 26 of these drivers just starting their journey here on the first rung of this amazing ladder program. Rasmuth Lint has truly been the surprise of the weekend. A talented driver, first year in the series. Top five last year in the CIK World Karting Championships. The young Swede with a ton of natural talent. But of course, coming here for the first time, you've got to get used to it because we really do throw them to the wolves early. They run the streets of St. Petersburg. Those concrete lined walls running around that racetrack, so tough, so perilous. He had a good run there. We moved to the Barber Motorsports Park track for Pro Mazda, not for USF 2000 this year. Their second race was actually the road course at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And then Rasmuth and the rest of the field getting challenged for the first time at Lucas Oil Raceway, an oval, 5 8 mile banked oval, and Rasmuth doing well there, qualifying second. Two pole positions here, though, for Rasmuth for Pabst Racing, Eric Mueller. And here's this young driver facing what will be his biggest challenge thus far of his first year racing career. Absolutely. You talk about daunting racetracks. This <laughs> is certainly one of them. There is so much history here, no different than Indianapolis Motor Speedway. But Road America has so much history, uh, certainly to the series, as well as to the, the Mazda Road to Indy ladder. Uh, and to, to win here puts a feather in any driver's cap. But to do it, it's always going to be difficult. Conditions, as you were just on pit lane as well, it's hot today. It's in the 80-degree range track temperature rising by the minute as we get into the mid-afternoon sun here at Road America. Uh, and tires are going to be at a premium with these Cooper tires. you got to be mindful uh, not to burn your tires up early on in this one. Well, when we started the Indy Lights race, it was 74 degrees track side and 106 track temp. So, as you said, we've, we're another, what, hour down from that. You're, we're likely into the low 80s. Uh, very very warm day, and as you said, you and I have talked before about the different uh, pavement, the different asphalt here at the track, how the drivers have to manage going from new asphalt to old asphalt, and uh, impressive the way they're going to be able to handle it. They were so good in qualifying, but it's always a little different when we're talking about wheel-to-wheel -wheel race uh, competition. This is when they're not just trying to find a fast lap, but instead trying to work their way forward. And again, we saw in the Indy Lights race so many great opportunities to, to overtake at this track, whether it's down into turn number five or coming into the hurry downs or coming through Kettle Bottoms to Canada Corner or turn one. There's just so many opportunities. The one difference from Indy Lights, they don't have the push to pass. They have to work to set a pass up. They've got to get into the slipstream, and they've got to make that deep-breaking uh, maneuver to get inside a driver and steal that apex. Racecraft is certainly critical here. You talk about maybe uh, showing yourself a little bit in the mirror to the left, to the right. You kind of get into the driver in front of you, into his head a little bit. You force a mistake into the corner. It's real easy to, to, to break too late into turn five, into turn eight, into turn 14. Uh, make that mental mistake. You get too far off. You 
You drop two wheels off in the dirt going up the hill to six. There's there's so many things that you as a driver can make a mistake on here. To win here, you've got to be almost perfect. And these drivers are learning that as part of the ladder system. These cars adapt very well to Road America, especially with these Cooper tires. Let's see a couple cars with stickers, a lot of scar cars with scuffs on, uh, a couple of heat cycles in these tires trying to make them last a little bit longer. And again, remember last year it was rookie Renus VK for Paps Racing that swept the weekend. Paps has been very strong here all weekend long thus far, and they've got drivers in first, third, fourth, and sixth. Now, one driver to watch deeper in the field, the veteran Alex Barron for Swan RJB Motorsports, starting 13th in that silver and gold number 19 machine. Watch for him to try to work his way forward. I talked to his engineer earlier. They found him issue with the setup pad. They are going to try to push forward for Alex Barron. Again, drivers lining up two by two. Lint and Kirkwood on the front row. It'll be the Swede on the inside, the Floridian on the outside. Not sure what Lint's doing right now. He's pushed over to the side of Kirkwood. Kirkwood will slot along beside him now. A little gainsmanship early. Kirkwood's going to try to squeeze him back over a little bit. Look at them just trying to get this thing on the clutch, getting them back rolling. Nice formation up the hill. Lint and Kirkwood, row one. Ming and Frederick, row two. Frog and Cole, row three. Ladies and gentlemen, we are underway here with USF 2000. Chip Summers from Elite Engines giving us the green flag. And we are green, 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 racing down into turn number one, side by side. Kirkwood on the outside. Lint on the inside. How do they come through? Kirkwood with the lead from the outside of row number one. What a start for Cal Kirkwood. Side by side, had that outside line and is able to come across the bow from left to right. He leads as they come out of turn number three for the first time. Field working their way through under the Bridgestone, or rather the uh, Briggs and Stratton Bridge. Now here comes the Sargento Bridge between turns three over to five. A little kink turn four. And they'll take their first run down into turn number five now. Kirkwood with a good jump. Your point leader has won three races thus far this year. Like Colton Hurdle looking for race win number four. Can they get through? Oh, a little contact there. One of the D-Force drivers getting moved out of the way. Another block coming up the run to turn number six. One of those Team Pelfrey course cars coming over a little bit, I believe, on Corey Enders. Finally, coming through turn number seven. Eric, it took a while, but I think we're close to being front to back into single file. Yeah, through Hurry Downs into turn seven and into turn eight into the carousel. Field slowly starting to, to kind of spread out of just a little bit. Lap one, always a little hairy here at Road America just because of uh, the start. You're, you're tightly bunched up together. Turn one is always the concern. Turn five on that first lap is always the concern. Now into the carousel. Now these drivers can kind of settle in, get into a little bit of rhythm, learn the racetrack, learn the line. Uh, that's going to change a little bit with the tire temperature, with all the different Compounds of rubber on the racetrack for the weekend. This track is quite a bit different than what they had in, in, in qualifying uh, as well as in practice over the course of the last two days. Yeah, agreed. Here they come through Canada Corner for the first time. A pretty good battle there further back. I want to say uh, that is the number 28 of Keith Donigan for BN Racing battling. And then, oh, there's that. That's uh, Colin Kaminsky in the 27. And we've, oh, driver off. Coming up through turn 13. Two drivers, three drivers off. One potentially not into the wall. They almost collide on the grass trying to get back onto the racetrack here. One of them a Pelfrey car. I'll try to get the ID on that car. Hard to see. One for sure a Pelfrey. We'll get them as they come back up the hill. Everyone cross start finish now trying to figure out which drivers were involved. They'll rocket their way back down to turn number one. Kirkwood with that lead. Here Thomas they come Sally now. And Cole. That's the 22 indeed of Lucas Cole on the podium last year for Pabst Racing. Man, that was, uh, that was an odd off there, Eric, to be able to come up the hill like that and essentially go straight off the racetrack, just kind of missed the apex and potentially got it out into the marbles. In, in the Verizon IndyCar Series, we've had two cars go yep. off in 13 uh, just with a little bit of the, uh, the apex uh, entry to that corner at the top of the hill. You're cresting the hill. Uh, in 13 and then making a, a hard turn to the left just a little bit. It doesn't seem like a whole lot, but that crest of the hill really set, upsets the balance of these cars. You kind of be mindful of that, getting back onto the throttle real early uh, on apex exit. And for all intents and purposes, those of you that maybe have never, never driven here before, it's a blind corner because you're coming up over. You're trusting that the apex is over the hill. you got to get that car pointed in the right direction. Big group of drivers a little further back. Kirkwood came across the line with a seven-tenths of a second advantage over Rasmus Lent. He had 1.1 seconds back to Kalen Frederick, two seconds then back to Keith Donigan, who's moved from 10th up into the fourth position. The BN racing driver Keith Donigan, the Irish pilot, now up into fourth. Igor Fraga 
running in fifth. That's, of course, across the line here uh, for exclusive autosport. Calvin Ming in sixth. Julian Vandervoort in, in seventh. Corey Enders eighth. Kyle Dupel ninth. And Jose Sierra rounding out the top ten. Alex Barron getting a couple spots early. He's up into the 11th position. Again, I'm wondering whether or not the Swan RJB guys were able to make a change and dial that car in for Alex Barron. Two times a winner already this year. Started in the 13th spot. He'll be on the attack for sure, trying to get himself back and going. And indeed, there he is now as they come up the hill. He's going to work on Kyle Dupel for ninth position. So indeed, Alex Barron in the number 19, the French driver, is on a roll now, trying to work his way back into the top 10. Top five or six really spread out a little bit. But then you get to a tight grouping of about uh, eight or nine cars through the middle of the, the top 10, all the way back to about 20 at that field. Really just bunched up now. And we've got a couple of battles here uh, deep in the pack. Looks like Solar Oval trying to make a move uh, as well and get uh, Dear Lando getting around Solar Oval, middle of the pack. And that right there going into turn number one was a great move for Corey Enders, the driver for D-Force Racing out of Sugarland, Texas in the number 11 machine going around the outside of Igor Fraga. Got a good run, run coming up the hill. Fraga moved to the inside to defend. And they went two by two down into turn number one. And Enders getting full advantage of the exit speed he had coming out of turn number 14. And, of course, takes the lead or takes the position, rather, going into turn number one. So count Enders now into the top five as it's Kirkwood, Lint, Fedrick, Donegan, and now Enders. Four different teams represented within the top five here in USF 2000. Yeah, great battle. Really, that uh, fifth, sixth, yeah. seventh, eighth, ninth, all tightly bunched together through turn six. That that's a corner that's blind as well in six. It's it's an incredibly good passing opportunity, but it's very difficult to pull off just because of the tight apex. It's it's a little bit tighter than it races a little bit tighter than a ninety degree apex, and you're just squeezing on the throttle just a little bit. If you get hung up on the inside, it's really difficult to make a pass there. Uh, but that opens up to turn seven, where you're almost flat out with these cars with the, with the wings, the arrow. It'll allow you to kind of skip through turn seven on driver, the driver around, driver around, turn coming 10. through the carousel. Someone hanging it out there, the carousel. We had a driver who looped the car, almost finished and almost out of the out of the corner, but just was trying to get roll on the throttle a little, a little too early when they had too much steering input in the wheel. So hopefully we can get a camera shot back to the carousel once again as that driver did go around. Everyone else staying to the inside. The nice thing about that corner, if you do go around, you're not going to come back to the inside. You're definitely going to the outside of the track. Another driver having trouble coming through turn number uh, 12, can of the corner. Off the racetrack, of course, we'll see as they come across the stripe down in turn 13, who's falling down the order. Kirkwood resets fast lap of the race, and then Frederick takes it back away. So, Kalen Frederick closing up to within 2.1 seconds. Car in the gravel at turn 10, a little bit further on beyond that uh, right now uh, into the carousel. So, Saber, definitely one car. I, I want to say it was Sabre Cook in the number 31. Indeed it was. It looked like a white and blue car. I didn't want to jump the gun, but Sabre Cook, the driver going around. I believe that's probably her, yeah, on the outside of that corner in the gravel trap. And indeed, full course yellow. Sabre Cook, the number 31, the young lady out of Grand Junction, Colorado for Team Bennick. Just lost the rear of that car, trying to roll on the throttle a little too much. And just as, just as that was happening, you were talking about how, uh, how tough turn seven is. And I was going to say that that's one of those corners I think that people don't give enough respect to in terms of it being one of the tougher corners. I talked to Pato Award. He says that's the hardest corner on this racetrack because you're just dancing on the ragged edge. You want to roll that throttle in, but you've got to kind of pull it back a bit because you know that you're just right on the edge trying to get down to turn number eight. Well, it's the run down the hill from seven to eight, hurry downs, incredibly important because it does set you up for the run into the carousel. So you've got to carry as much momentum through the center of eight to get into the carousel. And when you are you know, offline just a little bit like we saw in the carousel, it's real easy to drop that left rear off to the outside. You get into the marbles, you get into the gray stuff, and it's real easy to swap ends on the car. So uh, clearly uh, that whole section of racetrack, there's not a lot of twisty bits to Road America, but you go from 5 to 10, that section of racetrack is incredibly diff difficult to be able to manage your tires and manage your position relative to center off, yeah, apex no off. And that thing about the, the carousel, which I think is so important, as we said, you get in there and you're feeding it the wheel. You're trying. We talked to Parker Thompson uh, on the Indy Lights broadcast. 
you're able to get the throttle back on when you start opening up the wheel. When you're able to try to get out past the apex and you're trying to go to your exit point, the problem was Sabre looked like she may have pushed a little wide. When you're pushing wide, you've got to feed more wheel back into it to get the car back online to get back to your exit point. And if she was on too much throttle, that's when the car kinds to snap around on you. And yeah, it's a, it's a snap loose condition yep. because you're fighting you're fighting understeer. Yep. You're fighting, 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 and then the car gets grip, and then the reaction to come back to the other side, sometimes opposite lock, makes a big difference. No damage to the car at all, of course, being able to pull her out of the gravel trap deep enough to do its job and that slow her down before she gets to the the tire barriers. I would expect they'll bring this back out. She'll refire it and bring it back to pit lane. Crew will go over the car, get all the gravel out of the radiator inlets and potentially get Sabre back on the racetrack. Rookie driver here in the Cooper Tires USF 2000 Championship powered by Mazda. Again, as we do each and every race, we want to give a shout out to everybody tuning in on the Mazda Road to Indy app on your mobile device or through roadtoindy.tv. Let's give you a full field rundown as we're sitting here with nine laps to go on a full course yellow. Kyle Kirkwood leading the way in the number eight machine. Rasmus Lent, who started pole in second. Kaylin Frederick, the driver out of Maryland, in third for Pabst Racing. Keith Donegan. From Ireland in the BN Racing number 28 runs in fourth. Corey Enders after getting around Igor Fraga now up into the fifth spot. Fraga sixth. Julian Vanderwatt from South Africa in the Team Pelfrey number 80 in seventh. Calvin Ming in eighth. Jose Sierra for D-Force Racing in ninth. Alex Barron will take advantage of this. He's in 10th position. Started 13th. He'll be able to get that field bunching back up. Watch for Barron to grab a couple spots here on the restart. Kyle Dupel out of Portland, Oregon in 11th. Darren Keene from Florida now up into the 12th spot. Good start for Darren Keene. Again, like Barron, taking full advantage of the field, being stacked back up again. Then it will see Michael DiOrlando in 13th. Dakota Dickerson, his return to the series, running with Arms Up Motorsports here this weekend in the number nine. Dakota did a couple of races last year to start the season. Colin Kaminsky in the number 27 and 15th. Mateus Solar Oval, the young 16-year-old family-run team, number five, running in 16th. Another family team, Abel Racing. Jacob Abel, the number 79 in 17th. Manuel Cabrera from Mexico for exclusive autosport in 18th. Max Peichel for Arms Up Racing, uh, Motorsports rather, in the number 14 in the 19th spot. Russ McDonough for BN Racing in 20th. David Os Osborne for Newman Walks Racing in 21st. David Frost, his debut weekend here in the USF 2000 program, running with exclusive autosport, the 16-year-old from Singapore in 22nd, Oscar De La Zuriaga in 23rd, Bruno Tomaselli 24th, Lucas Cole in the pit in the number 22 after the incident over in turn number 12, and Sabre Cook back underway. Hopefully we'll see Sabre get back onto the racetrack. So Eric, there's your full field rundown. 26 great drivers here at the very start of this Mazda Road to Indy Adventure, USF 2000. Stack them back up. Looking like about eight laps remaining here in this, uh, in this uh, first race of the doubleheader. Yeah, you look at restarts, single file here, so it's not quite as chaotic as an initial start, but still, this is the opportunity, and we know that Barron is a monster on yeah. restarts here, and this is a this is a restart on a track that suits his driving style very well. Already up three spots from the 13th starting position up to the, the top 10. Uh, for Barron right now, he's got to make sure that he times this restart correctly. Uh, to try to jump around and get position going into turn one. It's very difficult to do that with a single file restart here in, on occasion, just simply because that leader has the ability to, to kind of stretch out or leg out a little bit in front of you. So as the, the leader brings the field down underneath that Verizon bridge and up to the Chevrolet Starters Bridge here at, at Road America, you really want to make sure that you're almost you know, five, six rows deep. You're, you're just trying to make sure that you're minding the tires a little bit clean them up a little bit, uh, and make sure that you're timing the start just right to that restart zone. We've seen guys be very aggressive here on starts. Not a restart, but a start. I remember Dakota Dickerson started at the tail of the field after breaking a half shaft in qualifying. I think he passed eight drivers before they got down to hurry downs. He went around the outside to turn number one, the inside down to turn three. I think the inside and a couple of guys in turn number five and got two guys going up the hill to turn number six and one to the inside of turn seven. It was an amazing opening lap, but that plays to what you're talking about. This track and the long straightaways, and if you get someone out of, out of shape and block into the inside, you block to the inside and turn three, you've ruined it in turn number five. So... If you can get in the guy's head in front of you, you get uh, moving forward, he gets a bit frantic, uh, you can find spots. And I would expect to see Alex Barron try to capitalize here again. Started 13th, will restart here from 10th, 
There'll be, I believe, seven laps to go on what was scheduled to be a 12-lapper. Seven laps remaining, and we're going to go back to green. Top three drivers on nose to gearbox, nose to gearbox. As you can be guaranteed, there's going to be a challenge for the lead coming in. Drivers already jumping out quick. Couple drivers into the grass already. This is not going to be good coming back onto the racetrack. Couple of drivers jumping early when the green flag flew. Not sure what happened there, but guys further back getting the call to go green, and there was a bunch of them. We're three wide all the way down into turn number one. Hold on, folks. Three wide. Leaders stretching away. Look at that three wide all the way through. Almost four wide as they're going to use the inside of the racetrack. Can they get through? That's asking a lot for these young drivers in this program. Coming down under the Briggs and Stratton Bridge to turn number three. Restart is under review. <laughs> not, not a surprise <laughs> at all. I don't know what was going on further back there. These guys all jumping out to the side. They must have been told green on the radio. Again, they will review it, as Eric told you. That was chaotic. But kudos to these guys for getting through one, two, three, four, and now racing down here into five. Who is your leader coming to turn number five? Still Kirkwood. So those front three drivers remaining exactly where they are. Kirkwood, Lint, Frederick, right there, one, two, three. Still tooth wide, almost three wide, coming up the hill to turn number six. Ming underneath a little bit of pressure here. Saw that. Getting pressured again, coming through turn number six as well now. Turn seven's where they really start to get back into line. Such a tough corner, those drivers trying to really maximize the grip on the outside of that corner down to the heartbreaking hurry downs. A couple of Pelfrey drivers battling it out there as well. I'm going to say potentially Julian Vanderwatt and Kyle Dupel, 10th and 11th. And again, another run through the carousel. Drivers, again, minding the grip level. So they try to roll back on the throttle. And again, such an important exit from the carousel. You can't really overspeak it, Eric. You've got to get out of the carousel quickly with good exit speed to maximize down to the end of the kettle bottoms. Absolutely. We saw one of the Pelfrey cars make a little bit of an, a, a very evasive move to the left heading out of turn 10. Uh, going a little bit narrower on the apex to the kink and cost a little bit of momentum. And then under pressure, got pushed wide now uh, into turn 12. So uh, just changing your racing line a little bit uh, changes or affects the way that you take the next corner here. Momentum all about this racetrack. It's a very rhythm-based racetrack. Uh, and getting off rhythm, out of sequence, pulled off. and Driver to pit lane. Yeah. Someone coming into pit lane here now. One of the white USF 2000 cars. Potentially mid-pack. They're not... It's not popping up for us here. Who could be in pit lane on live timing? We'll tell you when they follow Michael, us here. I Ma believe. No, excuse me. Michael D. Orlando, D Orlando, potentially. Yeah, Michael D. Orlando in the Benick. Uh, tough day here for Benick. D. Orlando showed great speed early. He now falls down to what will likely be 24th. Sabre Cook, 26. She is not retaken to the track, I believe. So, again, Michael D. Orlando, the number 51, off track. Car looks like there's a slowing in turn three coming to corner entry. And there's a wing possibly on the racetrack. So we've had some debris. There is the, the car there. Yeah, it looks like potentially one of the exclusive Autospark cars, either Daniel Frost or, uh, or Manuel Cabrera. So I think one of the exclusive Autosport black and red machines, that those trademark colors for the A-team. Exclusive Cabrera. Autosport. So it was Cabrera. Cabrera in the 90. Nah, tough one for Manuel Cabrera, losing that front wing, as Eric had mentioned, coming down to turn number three. Again, close quarters racing, of course, here with these cars, these spec USF 2000 cars, brand new race car, brand new Tatis chassis that was debuted last year. Of course, Renus VK coming in as a rookie, doing such a tremendous job for Pabst Racing, scoring two victories on his way to second overall of the championship. What a battle there. I'm liking that fight. A little further back, I think that's Kyle Dupel and Dakota Dickerson. Indeed, that's the fight now for 10th or 11th spot. Alex Barron moving his way up to 8th as we said, a charge early. Alex Barron now trying to go to work on Calvin Ming in the number 21. Barron still in the championship chase, but it is your point leader, Kyle Kirkwood, looking to win again. Coming off a big victory. There goes Dakota Dickerson off. He's going to try to get to the inside. Two wide more coming through there using all the racetrack on the exit of Canada Corner. But the fight further back, Darren Keene, Max Peichel, Julian Vanderwatt, uh, Russ McDonough, all two by two coming out of turn number 12. They are definitely testing track limits here, Eric, uh, and using all of the exit on turn number 14 as well. 
A lot of battles mid-pack against Solar Obel, Dupel, Dickerson. A little bit of a torrid battle there going into turn one. Kirkwood, though, setting the pace uh, right now. A 1.4 second gap back to second. Lynn, Frederick, and Donegan, your top four uh, as they're running here. Coming to uh, just past the five to go uh, at the stripe, Rob. This is the time where you start pushing a little bit harder. You know, you, you're kind of saving the tires for the first initial five, six laps, and then you want to try to start pushing harder here. So uh, Kirkwood needs to mind the gap. But if you're Lind or Frederick, maybe the, the time is now to go. I think all the way through the field, you're going to see exactly that. Some drivers may have been taking it easy a bit. There's a bit of a slide for Jose Sierra on the exit of turn number five. That's going to allow Mateus Solar Oval uh, to be able to slot through. That's for ninth position. So count Solar Oval up into ninth. Impressive season thus far for the, the rookie. Family run team rolling in here with a 24 foot trailer and getting the job done into the top 10. And there's Alex Bear in another spot. Barron able to get by Calvin Ming, I believe, and maybe even by Igor Fraga. Barron potentially could be into sixth position here. Alex Barron, the driver on the charge. I want to say that Calvin Ming, I think, got by Fraga and then Barron by Fraga as well. So I'm going to say based on just what we could see coming out of the carousel. Calvin Mings moved his way up to sixth. Barron to seventh. Fraga back to eighth. Solar Obel now in ninth. And Jose Sierra tenth. Kirkwood managing a pretty solid little advantage here now. As Eric had said, knocking out the laps here. It'll be four to go when they come back a stripe. There's contact there. Two drivers together coming through. Canada corner. An aggressive move to the inside. Sierra gets into the side of Solar Obel. Man, gloves are off, elbows up here, Eric, over the last couple of laps as Sierra got into the side of Solar Oval coming through the uh, the exit, the apex potentially of Canada Corner. Sierra definitely up on the wheel, Ooh. just trying to wheel that car through the corner. A little bit of a crazy, uh, crazy midway through this USF 2000. Pretty aggressive, Race I think. One. I think Solar Oval made a really good move to get the pass up in turn number five. Sierra obviously was not happy with, not so much was happy with the move, but not losing the position. And man, aggressive into Canada corner to get that position back. 1.6 now, the advantage for Kyle Kirkwood as he has stretched it out again about last couple of laps, I'd say holding on to a 1.4 to 1.6 advantage. Almost identical lap time to, uh, to Kalen Frederick as what has happened to Rasmus Lent? He's down to fifth. Didn't see that on the screen, but Rasmuth Lint had trouble on the racetrack. Kalen Frederick goes by. Frederick, Donegan, and Enders all by. Rasmuth Lint started on pole. He has now fallen to fifth position. So the young Swede back to P5. And look out who comes charging. Alex Barron, P7. Started 13th. He's moved up three, uh, six spots. Barron now into seventh. Going to work on Calvin Ming for Paps Racing. Still a local yellow in turn three. They brought the local yellow back out. Looks like they're trying to get the car behind the wall to not affect the rest of the race. Uh, so at this point, they're still trying to move the car of Cabrera behind the barrier. And once that is cleared, then uh, turn three will go back to green. Obviously, the key thing for these young drivers is track time. We want to give them as much as possible. And if the race direction crew here for the Maserati can do anything to get the car off track and keep it green, they'll do so. And... I like that because these young drivers need as much track time as possible. Good fight coming down into Canada Corner as, uh, as well. That's that battle for, I believe, fourth and fifth. Indeed, that is Rasmuth Lint trying to get back by Corey Enders. And look at this fight again. Here's Darren Keane. Keane on the roll. He's having a good run here. Now up into the 10th spot. Tough qualifying for Darren Keane, a brand new engineer at Newman Walks Racing here this weekend. John Hayes taking over the engineering controls, and you got to give him a little leeway to get a feel for the team, a feel for the car, and Keane making it happen here. He has worked his way now up into the top 10. Keane able to stretch away a little bit coming down here from Mateus Solar Oval. He'll need guys to race in front of him to get another spot, though, because he's quite a ways back, but still a solid run. There's Rasmus Lint to the inside of turn number one. Book it. Lint to the inside of Corey Enders. He goes back to P4. Enders struggling a little bit with a little bit of oversteer in 12 through Canada Corner. Agreed. Really lost a lot of mo momentum through 13. And then in 14, the end result, 
is a pass down to the end of turn one. And here comes Calvin Ming and Alex Barron as well. Those four drivers, Lint, Ming, Barron, and Fraga, or rather Enders, Lint, Ming, and Barron, all fourth through seventh, are going to be nose to tail coming down into turn number five. Watch for Barron to get aggressive. In fact, look to the outside. I think it's Ming to the inside and Enders to the outside. He's going backwards. You're yeah, right. Enders really struggling with some lateral grip with those rear Cooper tires. And at that point, they do what they can with the tools inside the car to try to change the setup just a little bit. And there's only so much you can do. You get to the front or back of that window, and you're locked and loaded. So at this point, if he's all the way to the one end of the spectrum in terms of uh, onboard tuning, Anders is going to have to do it himself. He'll have to take care of it. He'll have to wheel this thing to try to hold back a couple of very good veteran drivers in uh, Calvin Ming and Alex Barron. Of course, Incident down in turn seven and eight through hurry downs. We'll hopefully have a look at that, find out what happened there. Driver, more drivers moving forward. As we said, Michael D'Orlando out, Lucas Cole, Sabre Cook, Manuel Cabrera, Julian Vanderwatt out as well. Saber, Saber Cook sounds like a, another incident in turn between seven and eight in the bottom of hurry downs. So Sabre Cook back, got back out, out of the racetrack, but an issue for her, obviously a balance issue on that car. She's been struggling. An issue first in the carousel and now down into the hurry downs of turn uh, number eight, which really is, you're trying to hustle through there. You talked about how important that corner is to get out of turn number eight, Eric, and get over to the carousel. And, and any time I've raced here, man, you're rolling it in there, but you're trying to get back on power quickly. Full course yellow, <sighs> fairly significant impact, sounds like, uh, for Cook. So trouble, as Eric has said, for Sabre Cook down in potentially turn number eight. We'll try to have a look at it here. Yeah, actually, she, that's actually coming down like she may have had some trouble coming through turn seven, Eric, and potentially got crossed up a little bit. She's getting out of the car, which is great news. We can see from our screen here, there's Sabre Cook climbing out of the car. Rear damage, significant damage to the left rear, the rear wing. And you got to think, Eric, coming out of turn number seven, you know that when you get out there, we've talked about how tough that is, up on the rumbles, potentially dropping a wheel and spinning that thing around. From what they said is uh, Cook was... Four wheels off to driver's left, coming off exit to seven, pushed it wide, car hopped in the grass, turned dead stick to the right, and you'll see a little bit of debris there over on the right-hand side. You'll see the impact mark yep. uh, right there. Uh, so you'll see the, see the skid marks just to uh, the, the right of your indeed. screen there and turned around and then backed it in with the left rear, took out the WeatherTech sign on the driver's right-hand side down to the tree, what would be the drop at the SeaTech Manufacturing Motorplex uh, just before entry to turn eight here in Hurry Downs. So that is a unfortunate incident, uh, likely going to end this race on yeah, the yellow. Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm looking out at Paul Blevins on, uh, on the starter stand now, waiting for him to pull that checker out because we only have two laps remaining in this race. And again, that is significant impact. They're, you're not going to tow her anywhere at this point because she's far away from an access point as it is. But at this, yeah, at this point, I got to say, we're going to be close to wrapping this one up with Kyle Kirkwood cruising by the field, seeing the incident for the first time with the AMR safety team there. Kirkwood, your leader. Frederick in second. Donegan third. Rasmus Lent in fourth. Corey Enders in fifth spot. Calvin Ming in sixth. Alex Barron seventh. Igor Fraga in eighth. Jose Sierra ninth. And Darren Keane rounding out the top 10. Again, expecting to see us going to a checkered flag here at start finish. I just don't see them able to get this mess cleaned up and getting back to green up. If they could, they'd try. I guarantee you that. We still have time to go. It's a 12 lap race, but 40 minutes is the time window. But just two laps remaining. So again, they'll, they would come around here and still get the white flag, and then we would go check her next time by. So for all intents and purposes, your point leader, Kyle Kirkwood, will extend his lead after race number one of the doubleheader here at Road America. Certainly got the hop on that restart. I'm just looking at the, uh, the names of the drivers up front. Kyle Kirkwood, Kalen Frederick, and Keith Donegan. Kyle, Kalen, and Keith on the pole on the of uh, the podium here today. A Amer couple of Americans and an Irish driver. Kirkwood from Jupiter, Florida. Frederick from Potomac, Maryland, and Donegan from Ireland. His first podium finish here in Mazda Road to Indy competition. 
Rasmuth lent the Swede in fourth, and the, the Texan Corey Enders, the young American driver in the number 11, will likely finish in fifth. Having a look as they come back up the hill here. And again, it will be the white flag being displayed, white and yellow at start finish. Man, we saw some great action. There's no doubt about that. Kyle Kirkwood got a great start, able to get around the outside of Rasmuth Lint heading into turn number one. And again, Kyle adding to the resume his fourth win of the season, which will be official next time they get around here. Keith Donigan moving up aggressively from 10th. Strong run for him to P3. Alex Barron from 13th up into the seventh spot as well. Darren Keene up into the top 10. Good run for Darren Keene today. Looks like we'll have, what, 23 finishers as Lucas Cole was indeed able to get that car repaired and back out onto the racetrack. See, Julian Vanderwatt, uh, his front wing is what came off and may have precipitated the uh, mechanical issue for Cabrera in turn three. Uh, so uh, Vanderwatt lo losing the front wing uh, on that machine on pit lane. And tough one for Julian. I said, I said he's been having a good weekend. He'll be looking forward to getting right back at it tomorrow morning when the USF 2000 drivers have their second race, bright and early at 8 o'clock in the morning. He'll want to get back out and show the speed he has because this has been his best weekend thus far for Julian. But Kyle Kirkwood will be thrilled with this one. Hey, you know what? I'll take the wins any way they come. Kyle Kirkwood. Jupiter, Florida, home, running for Cape Motorsports. I think they've won the last seven driver championships. A powerhouse team here in USF 2000. Got challenged last year aggressively by Pabst Racing and Reynas VK. Winning with Oliver Askew, who now runs with them in the Pro Mazda Championship. A driver circulate under the yellow flag once again. As we said, a, an incident with Sabre Cook coming out of turn number seven, going four wheels off on the exit. She ends up in the wall on the uh, right side of the racetrack. Damage to the left rear and the rear wing as well, potentially right rear too. Of course, the contact coming through that left rear. She looped the car around. But again, drivers just circulating around the racetrack. They will see the checkered flag from Paul Blevins here at start finish. We actually had one of our guests who was will likely throw the checkered flag. We've had some awesome guests here this weekend, of course, from Cooper Tires and Elite Engines as well. Chip Summers will be up on top of the flag stand with his sons Jack and Will to give that checkered flag for the fourth time this year to Kyle Kirkwood. Again, extending his point lead. Alex Barron, second place coming in. It's going to tighten things up for sure. Second, third, and fourth. Fifth as well. We'll see how it all slots in once the points get locked and loaded. But this is one of these cool-down laps, Eric, that you like. I'm good. Yeah. Yellow flag, checker flag's coming. Kyle Kirkwood feels especially, very good right now. Especially when you're on the point, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> when you're second. Now, Frederick wasn't really in a place, I think, to challenge. If you were no. second and trying to challenge, it could be a little infuriating when you're setting up for what could be uh, you know, last lap pass, but uh, Kirkwood had developed a nice little advantage over by about 1.5 seconds. But this will be the fourth time that Kyle Kirkwood will taste the champagne or apple cider as it is, sparkling apple cider for drivers at USF 2000. Again, checker flag being thrown as Kirkwood comes across the line. Liking that, your race winner. Kalen Frederick in second. Keith Donigan third. There's your podium. Rasmuth Lint, the pole sitter, ends up in fourth. Corey Enders in the fifth spot. Calvin Ming in sixth. Alex Bear in seventh. Igor Fraga eighth. Jose Sierra ninth. And Darren Keene rounding out your top ten. The opening race of the doubleheader for the Cooper Tires USF 2000 Championship powered by Mazda. Round six of 2018 goes to Kyle Kirkwood here at Road America. Was that any fun out there? Oh, it definitely was. I had a swarm of those Pats cars around me. Uh, they've been quick here. It's obviously their home track. So fortunately, we were able to come away with the win. The car was amazing. Huge thanks to the Cape guys uh, for putting uh, such good wheels under me. And uh, no, I couldn't be happier with the result. Now, Nick Cape just hugged you and I think almost broke your back. Are you feeling yeah. okay after that? No, I'm all right. I got a little cramp when he did that. He lifted me up and uh, that was a long race, actually. Even, the, even though there's such long straights, the track's very physical. So it was a good race overall. And yeah, the team's exci excited. So am I. Well, go eat a pickle and you won't have any more cramps, okay? Uh, I heard it was mustard. 
Mustard, pickle, Gatorade, they all work. Oh, okay, I'll do that. I'll do all three. Your championship point leader, Kyle Kirkwood, with the win at race one here at Road America. Congrats, Kyle. Thank you.